Hello, this is Carrie again, and I have another video for you today. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about um, what to do with your new toys that you will get during the Christmas vacation to get ready to enjoy them to the fullest. Now, originally, I was planning on doing this video in January, um, obviously, like right after Christmas or something, um, but I have been feeling under motivated to review some of the things that I had lined up to do a review on. So one of the things that I had to do a review on, and this review um, is basically ready to go, I just need to film it, and I have just haven't been motivated to film them, um, is this review for the Crayola Signature Pencils. They are okay. They're not great. They're not terrible. They're just okay. And I have not been that motivated to do my review on them, but it's been ready literally for at least a week. But um, I will do that review. And when I do that review, I'm actually gonna give away this set that you can see is unopened because they sent me a set of 24 as well as this is, I think the set of 24. And they also sent me a set of 50. Um, so I will be giving away the set of 24 when I do that review. And that will be up definitely before Christmas. So, um, so there's that. So, um, in the meantime, um, since I was feeling unmotivated to film that, um, I do have this, uh, if you guys saw my video, uh, I think it was last week, I got, um, some unclaimed funds and I ended up getting the complete set of Sennelier watercolor paints. And so this is the complete set, um, that's already been swatched out. And I really wanted to talk about these, um, but the paint is not completely, like not all the colors are completely dry that have been put into the tubes. Um, some of the colors are pretty dry. Um, other colors are definitely not dry. So, um, and then I started swatching the color soft and I was like, you know what? What I really wanna talk about is I wanna talk about what do you, like what happens when you get new stuff and um, how to maximize your enjoyment of the new stuff and how to avoid, you know, like getting something new and, you know, like being disappointed, like, you know, using them on your favorite piece or whatever. So um, I thought that that's what I would talk about. If you guys don't mind, if you guys can join me and um, you can bookmark this video and then watch it in January after you get whatever pencils or paints or whatever you get for, um, for Christmas. So um, after that, it's been a two and a half minutes and I still haven't started with the topic of the video. Ah, I ramble a lot. Um, anyway. So, um, so one of the things that I am a big, big proponent of is swatching. I believe strongly in swatching. You can see me doing my Sennelier swatching, um, right here. And this is the, this is the second sheet of my Sennelier swatches. I'm a big, big believer in swatching. I think swatching is pretty much one of the best ways to get to know your new products. And I did a video of how I do my um, colored pencil swatch cards, my smaller swatch cards that I use these two by two um, squares. And I will give a link to that video on how I specifically make my um, two by two swatch cards and um, how I use that. Um, so I make those and I swatch them out. And as you can see, I'm currently swatching out the set of 24 color soft that were on sale on Amazon. I think it was like a Black Friday sale and they were like $18 or something like that. So I got them and I'm gonna definitely do this review before Christmas as well. So you guys can have that done. So that's the first thing is to do the swatching. And I know some people think that swatching is a waste. So you're sitting there um, and actually I can do a little bit of swatching while we talk. Um, so you're sitting there and you are gonna be using up some pencil and some material. So like you're swatching and you are totally using up pencil and you are totally using up material. Um, in some cases, a lot of material to do your swatching, but for your colored pencils um, and for your watercolor pencils, for your, you know, your coloring related color items, um, I think it's really important because you do get a sense to really get to know the pencils. For the most part, most colored pencils and watercolor pencils will feel the same throughout, but sometimes you get some that don't exactly feel the same throughout. So you get a chance to get a feel for your colored pencil or your watercolor paints. Um, and especially for watercolor paints, then you get into the sense of, you know, some colors are more pigmented than others. Um, you know, Blue Selenier is really pigmented. Another color that has a very high pigment load um, 
is dioxazine purple. I used a tiny, tiny little dot, uh, much less than I used for some of these other ones where I wasn't quite sure how pigmented they would be. Um, and so by using just a little bit, it let me do this like really big, um, all of this. And it was really very nice um, in terms of these paints. Because this is my first time with the vast majority of these colors, I wasn't really sure um, how the texture would be. And I got a chance to really see what I was dealing with um, and to get to really get to know these colors. Um, another one that I found really interesting and I fell in love almost instantly with the color. I don't know if you can see it is Green Earth. Um, but the thing that you see about Green Earth and you see it instantly is you see how I pretty much tried to use the same size small dot and you see how it just took a whole bunch to try to get just a very light muted color on there. I absolutely love that. Um, it was very, it's not a very strong color. Um, the same thing with the Burnt Sienna for the Sennelier version of the Burnt Sienna is not a very strong color, but I totally had no problems with the fact that it was not a very strong color. The Blue Sennelier is absolutely a just a, just a pop color. It's a very, very strong color. Um, and you can see like how just it goes and there's still um, a bunch of uh, pigment left there from the tube. Um, whereas the Green Earth and the Burnt Sienna, both of them were just very, very light colors. And I totally love that because that's just how I like doing. Um, so it was very, so it was really nice to be able to just see that from these paints and to be able to get a chance to know the different colors. Now, the other thing, and this is going to be more of an issue with your paints than with your colored pencils. But um, I did have this issue and I kind of, I expected it with the paints, um, but I didn't know what colors it would be with. I don't know if you can see, but pretty much all of these colors were poured on the same day. Um, but this one was really super runny. And if I poke a pencil through it, the bottom of it, it's still not dry. Um, it's probably gonna take a long time to dry. This Kaput Moirum was literally like, um, it was literally like a soup when it came out um, and it wasn't supposed to be that way. But when you have a giant set of tubes, um, I feel like some colors might sit longer than others. And it was just a, you know, it was just like a, an issue. And I wasn't, you know, um, Jackson's art did a really good job of making it right. And I will be able to get, um, I probably get replacement tubes for some of the tubes that were problematic. It wasn't a lot of them, but it was enough that it was an issue the way I had to write them about it. Um, and they did a really good job of correcting that. And I sort of expected that, like I said, when you get so many tubes, it was a hundred tubes. Um, and each paint is different and has its different characteristics. So I did expect that. Not every single paint would be absolutely perfect, but the, the purple soup was definitely a problem for me um, from the Kaput Mortem. So, but they were able to fix that and I will be able to get a replacement tube. So that's the other thing. Um, sometimes you have people who buy stuff and they don't use it right away. And then if there's a problem, well, you know, you've had it in your house for a year, you never got around to using them. So, so that's, um, so that's my sort of pro swatching thing. The other thing about, um, making your swatches and we still haven't gotten to notice, we still have not gotten to the point where you can use them on your coloring book because we still haven't gotten to that point. So the other thing that I'm a big proponent of is to use a high quality paper or to use the same paper that you use all the time. Um, I know a lot of people who will do their swatches on printer paper and I understand the urge to do that because you will save money if you do that. Um, and I know people don't want to do swatches because you know you, you're wasting a lot of you're not wasting but you're using a fair amount of pigment and I know some people really don't want to use um, especially for paints for watercolor this applies more to watercolor pencils and paints is to use real 100 percent um, cotton watercolor paper for your swatches and i know some people are going to disagree and they're going to say it's expensive and i understand trust me i know this is real 100 percent cotton watercolor paper um not necessarily the most expensive brand this is um uh strathmore ready cut i think is what this is um but in using this paper, I get a chance to see how it flows on cotton paper 
um, and how it, you know, it moves around on cotton paper. And I really appreciate that because when you use um, printer paper and you use another kind of paper, it's not going to flow the same way as when you use real watercolor paper. And you want your swatches to be helpful to you and to be effective using them for when you actually do your coloring or your drawing or your painting. So you want your swatches to really help you um, and to last and not to fall apart on you or certainly not to lose them. So that's the other thing is I strongly recommend using um, high quality paper um, for your swatches. Um, avoid using printer paper, you know, getting at least, you know, drawing paper or something like that. Just some kind of paper that is a, is relatively high quality so that you can have uh, a swatch that's actually effective and helpful to you and that is actually really usable. So that's the next thing is to not skimp on your paper and not use, you know, cheap printer paper um, if you can avoid it. Um, some other notes on swatching um, before, some other notes um, on swatching before we get to the end um, here is the other thing is when, okay, so now you've done all your swatching, right? So now you've done all of your swatching you finish your, your chart, you did your chart on high quality paper, your paints have completely dry and you're not a soupy mess. If you need some support from the company, there's a problem with any particular item, um, you can have that addressed and it's not an issue. So you're ready and now you're ready to start coloring or painting. I, I need to finish this one. This is one of the, I literally started this one in like 2015. I, no, not 2015, 2016, I think was when I started this. I literally started this one in 2016. I still have not finished it. Um, but anyway, so some of these have been um, in the works for a while. So anyway, so now you've had a chance to play with your paints or your pencils and you're ready to pick a page to work on. Um, I understand the urge to take your favorite you know, your favorite painting that you've made or your favorite page and just go nuts on your favorite page. But I strongly advise against that. I think for your first time using it, um, even though you've already had the experience of the swatching, you should get a coloring book or get a page that you like, but that is not your favorite and um, get started on a sample page um, you already know now a little bit of how the pencils feel. You already know if they are excessively soft, in which case you don't want to use something with a lot of details, or you might want to, you might not want to use something with a lot of detail because um, you're going to be sharpening a lot. Maybe you want to use something more like this where it's more of an open space. Um, um, but again, you don't want to use your favorite. You use something like this and it gives you a chance to really practice and to just, you know, finalize your practice and get a chance to become more familiar with the product and with what you are working with. Um, so let's say you've now you finished your, your, you finished your first coloring page with your less than favorite piece of, um, you know, your less than favorite coloring page or your less than favorite, um, work of art, you know, you didn't line something on your favorite paper that took you like six months to line and then you started on your brand new paints with it. Please don't do that. Um, so now you've started on your less than favorite piece. And so now, now after all that, you are finally ready to take your paints and your pencils or your pencils or whatever. And now you're ready to add them to your favorite page or your favorite, um, or your favorite work that you've that you've made and if you do this in this step you will gain one firsthand knowledge of how each individual pencil or paint functions um, at least briefly while you're doing your swatches two you'll gain comfortability as to how they actually work in the actual usage of them and you won't have quote unquote damage something that you want to keep um, and lastly, you'll definitely be much more comfortable and much more free than if you just start off with your favorite page and you won't be anxious or anything like that. You'll be able to just take it and enjoy. So if you follow, this is what, this is what I do. And this is what I've been doing, um, in taking all the products that I review and everything that I take in, this is pretty much how I do things. So before I start coloring, um, before I start coloring, I might have done 
you know, a minimum of one or two swatches of every single pencil before I actually get to using it. Um, because for me, in addition to doing the swatching that this would be the swatch that goes in with a tin. So if you see this, the way I've sized this, hold on, let me take this out. So the way that I've sized this is that once I finished, um, I'm going to laminate this with packing tape and then this will be the one that will go in the tin and this will be the one that I saved with the tin. In addition to this one, I have a comparison swatch and I should have brought one, but you guys have seen my review. You guys have seen it. You know what it looks like. It's, um, it's literally just uh, the top 12 colors plus a little circle with a little mixing. And I set that aside and I use that for comparison. Um, now that second swatch I just do for my reviews or for whatever um you don't need to do that second one but by the time I get to coloring my favorite page I've already had a fair amount of experience with the pencils or the paints and so it's much more enjoyable I know that whatever um, page that I choose to do will work really well with the pencils or the paints or the color the watercolor pencils that I have um, and that's one way so that's what I do. Um, I might say you a lot, but it's, I've talked about this with my friends a lot, but I think you should be split up into like five different words. Um, and in this video, I did use you to mean me, um, which is a weird way to use the word you, but I did, I did. Um, so that's how I, that's how um, I do when I get a new pencil, paint, whatever, um, as you can see. Um, and it does take, and it does mean that like when you get your pencils or you get your paints on the day that you get them, you can't like, I can't like take them out and do my favorite piece that same day. You see what I mean? I see how I use you as I, you, I, I'll get into it another day, but I literally think that you should be literally like five different words. Um, it's it's too complicated anyway sorry <laughs> um so anyway so then i take the the pencils or the paints and i use them in this way so that when i'm when i get to a page and i get to something that i want to color it's so much fun and the stress of how does this color look and how does that color look all of that has come and gone and i don't have to worry about anything i know um once i have the color chart like Let's pretend these are colored pencils. Like once I have my colored pencil chart, I know what colors might be missing from the set and I know where I might need to do layering and where I might need to do mixing. I know um, how to use the colors that I want to use um, a lot of times. And it looks like this one has that same problem. Um, especially for these smaller sets, they might not necessarily have the color that I would want for um, brown or African-American skin tone, but then I can get a chance to really play with it and figure out how I want to mix it up. I mean, really skin tones, you, you usually, regardless of the shade, you want to mix the skin tone up anyway, but, um, but doing it this way gives me a really nice chance to mix up the, the skin tones or to mix up whatever color I had. Um, the uh, Karen Dodge Luminance I found was lacking a really strong cool red like a really strong purplish red um and so that's okay I can just layer and create the color that I want to that I want to create so um so I think that's it so this is how I even though I did use the word you I meant me um this is how I set up you know when I get new pencils um and I realize that it seems tedious but for me the end result is so worth it. Um, as a matter of fact, let me pause right one second and show you some of my completed pages. I'm just gonna pause okay, one because second. Because that's how spouses work. Um, my wife moved around my binder of my completed pages. So I don't have as much to show you as I would like, um, but I do have this, which is a work in progress. And I've literally been working on this for like, oh, most of this year. I feel like I started this in January um, and it's taken me forever to finish it. Um, I'm not sure why I have that issue with the Basford books that I struggle to finally get to the end, but I will finish this and um, I think that's it. So that's this one. Um, and this is the first one that I made with the Crayola, um, with the new artist Crayola colored pencils, which like I said, are okay, not great, not terrible. Uh, I found that there were some breakage issues. Just how you see this pencil being down. This one has um, major breakage issues because I don't switch to this um, less pointy shape 
until I've had a number of breakages. So this one also has um, quite a few breakages. And this is like, you know, trying different sharpeners or whatever. But anyway, so, um, but I did want to show you this that I made pretty much using the same system that I showed you earlier. Um, so that's what I did to try to figure out, you know, how everything works and, you know, how best to do it. Um, and I found that using this system makes it a lot easier to get results that are fairly close to what I want to get to, even when the pencils or the paints or whatever isn't quite perfect and I don't have all the colors that I feel like I would need. Um, so anyway, so this was a lot of fun to do this page, even though this is not, you know, this is obviously not like the luminance or whatever. Um, so this made it really easy for me to get the results that I basically wanted. This is pretty much what I, what I wanted when I started. So I'm very happy with this, um, with this page. Um, I think that that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the question if you guys have um, any questions. Down in the comments if you guys have any questions. As well as if you guys are, um, what sorts of, are you guys expecting to get any new art supplies for Christmas? Um, and what do you guys think about my uh, admittedly over overly complicated system of using new pencils and um, doing a page with new pencils? Um, and new paint. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hi Stewie. That's right. See, do you agree that you should be more than all, like one word? You got your you singular, you got your you plural, you got your you general, you got your you specific. Like specifically you are a fat cat. <laughs>